All right, so it's September 5th, 2017. This vlog is a very unique vlog. Uh, it's about me fighting for my right to continue to be able to farm and use a building on my property that we put here for the sole purpose of farm storage and farm related activities. To start this all off, I, I applied for a permit in February of 2014. That permit was issued February 27th of 2014. Uh, the, the township code or the township inspector came out and approved, approved the building. He saw the building. Um, and we're based on a farm that has 25 acres and we gross over $10,000. So we should be protected by the Pennsylvania state right to farm act. As far as this is concerned, you know, we have a 880 square foot home right there. We have no storage in our home. We don't have room for a TV. We don't have a TV. We don't have a desktop computer. We heat our house with firewood. This is a life that I chose, that I choose to live with my family. We have two bedrooms. We have five people that live in our house. We farm pigs, turkey, ducks, chickens, all laying hens, and, for, and we also have Cornish crosses. We've had Cornish crosses for meat. We've had pigs for meat. We have squash, tomatoes, broccoli, um, cucumbers, all, you know, various different types of vegetables that we also use to sell at different outlets, you know, various different outlets, and we process all these things. So we're also in the Berks County Conservancy, in the Berks County Conservancy, a Conservancy Agency, and we have been in the, this property has been in the clean and green, Pennsylvania clean and green since I believe 1986. So all these things are factors that are very, very important to understand the background of this farm. So when we bought this property, we, uh, we applied and became a Schedule F farm. We are, it's, you know, we're called Hickory Hills farm we have the tax code and based off the of Pennsylvania right to farm act having more than 10 acres or grossing more than ten thousand dollars from that farm we are issued we are officially a farm uh, this is not my primary income this is a secondary income for me but this is a hobby that I, I that I enjoy this is a, a hobby that I enjoy to teach my kids lessons and to have them enjoy their the you know, the outdoors but also so that we get good sustainable food and we know where our food is coming from. So with all that being said, we have two storage units on our property. One is this old chicken house, okay? It's an outdoor chicken house. The outdoor chicken house is not mice proof. It's not, it's not proof, even proof for animals. We've found cats in there and all that stuff. So we try and keep a bunch of stuff that we don't really need all the time. We got solar panels in there. Um, antique stuff that was left over when we bought this place anything you can think of our second storage which is our our this is another secondary building this is the the issue here that the township is having a problem with so the township came out gave us they inspected back in 2014 they gave us a permit which i'm going to put in here so you guys can see the permit issued to us they they signed off on this building we bought this on Craigslist for $4,000. We moved it here and this was used primarily as a shed slash barn. It does have running water, it does have electric, but again, it's a barn, it's a shed. We use it for processing, we use it for washing our eggs, we use it for washing our vegetables, and we use it for various other, other things. So 2014, we're issued the permit. Then in 2000, the permit guy came out, he inspects it, all good. 2000, uh, 15, he's, it was noted that someone named K.S. complained about our um, about a PVC pipe in the front of our yard. And if you look in here, see through there, there's a, there's a little PVC pipe that was installed by the previous owners in like 1985, okay? Let me zoom out of my face. So that PVC pipe was installed in the in the 80s and this guy who complained who was also a uh, township supervisor forced the township uh codes guy to come back out this is his second trip back out he comes out he inspects that he asks to see the inside of the shed to make sure no one's living in there that's the second time third time uh this is about a year and a half ago so i think it was 2015 uh, maybe a little bit maybe 2016 or early 2016 but i'm pretty sure it was the fall of 2015 uh, the township codes guy comes out for a third time. He comes to inspect our sewer system. When he inspects the sewer system, he asks, and this is because the township didn't plan properly and they were having problems with the sewage. So he asks, can I go back and I, can I inspect, you know, the, the secondary 
uh, building here, the shed, make sure no one's living there. Absolutely. Open arms. Go in. Inspect. Now, that's three times. Now we got, it, now fast forward to July of 2000, or the beginning of July of 2017, the, the former codes guy gets fired. Okay, new codes guy comes in. We'll call this other guy KS, complains that we're in violation, that this is a, he calls this a primary structure. So the township agrees that we're, we're in violation. Three notices of violation. We have a primary structure violation. He calls it a, a they, the township. I need to refer to this as Onalani Township refers to this as a primary structure. They refer to this as a, as a uh, home or housing dwelling unit. And that's the second violation. The third violation is that this is a mobile home. It's actually not a mobile home. Um, it, it's a T-111 shed. Um, I, I don't, it's, it's so frustrating. But so now this is the day of the inspection. They're coming to check out the, the actual shed and make sure what it is. And, and it all goes back to, they were trying to tell me that because the original codes guy didn't sign off on the permit, even though he was out here three times and it has been, it has been written down that he was out here twice, but he just never filed the proper paperwork. So now I'm in a position of being guilty until proven innocent. And that's the problem now is that I am guilty until proven innocent. And if I am not proving to them that this is a secondary structure and that this is my farming shed, which it is, and you'll see in a second, that this is my farming shed, that I will be forced to remove this from my property and I can no longer use this as a farming, as, as a farming unit, as a farming storage unit, which is ridiculous. And the problem be, being is that this is a mouse proof building. My chicken house is not a mouse proof building. And I have, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of feed throughout the property. I'm an avid ornithologist. I like to watch birds. I have bird feed. I have all this stuff because this is my God given right to protect my, to, to participate in things that I want to do and to raise my family the way I want to raise my family and the way my wife wants to raise my family. So now here we are. I'm going to take you on a tour of the shed before the, the township supervisor or codes guy gets here. The ironic part behind all this also is that they issued me this viol notice of violation while I was representing the United States of America in Tokyo at the, at the World Weightlifting Championships. So they gave me a 30-day uh, violation period and while I was representing our country. Okay, so we got storage here. We got chicken and bird seeds. We take these out. Our system is once, you know, once we feed the, the chickens, we move bird or feed from the back, back up here. Uh, this is storage that we use for, for picking. This is when we bring in our, our chickens. These are all our tools. Uh, this is our um, electric wire here. These are some sweet old bird or uh, chicken waterers that we use when we get chicks in. These are brand new ones. We bought these in the beginning of summer because we we're going to try and get like 350 Cornish crosses. When I got back from Japan and we had that notice of violation, I decided that we had to save our money and no longer could farm this summer with Cornish crosses. So they're infringing upon not only my rights, but my ability to continue to farm. We got tools here. Uh, we installed this wood stove so that we could come out and work out here in the winter time and that we could dry herbs. We got uh, garlic and onions here. Let's see here. We got our drying racks up here, our screens that we use. Uh, sometimes we'll pick echinacea because it is native to Pennsylvania and we can use that for tinctures for when we get sick. Um, we got this scale, this scale sweet, more tools, uh, jars, beans, all, everything was grown on our, on our property. And this is all stored appropriately. Frozen water in there for when we transport stuff to the gym. We've got beets. Greens, squash, lettuce. This was the bathroom when we bought this place, but we took the bathroom out. So there is no bathroom and there's no one running water here either. All of our tomatoes. We're going to use this to make uh, tomato sauce, sauerkraut crop. This is where we wash our eggs. Here's the ironic part. The former, the former township codes guy actually told us, he said, I asked him if this was a good idea. And he said, it's probably not a bad idea if we covered our windows because KS and, and other people, none of my immediate neighbors have complained about this building. It sits back off the road. You don't even know it's here. 
None of my immediate neighbors have complained. I've talked to all of them, none of them have complained. One individual, possibly two, have complained because they see lights on in here. So two years ago he said, dude, it might be a good idea to cover those, those windows so nobody can see in. That's how ridiculous this is. So we had to do that. We have our stove here because we do not have hot water in the building. We use water for our shed, or for our eggs. We heat up water here. This stove came with the, came with the building, so we use that. There's some more squash, okay. So this is the second room, kitchen type room. This is the third room. This is a tub that we use for uh, cooling. The only time we'll ever use this is if we're cooling uh, like beans or greens. Sweet potato chimney to cure sweet potatoes. Storage, bushel bags for picking. This is where the feed is. Um, this is a, a medical base bed from a hernia surgery that we were trying to save. I did try and sell on Craigslist, but nobody ever bought it. Um, we got some medicinal mushrooms back there. And then we have echinacea tea over here, okay? So echinacea tea, medicinal mushrooms, that's in this room. And we do have some, uh, there's some like feed back here and, and some random clothes, like for, you know, all storage stuff. No one's living in this place. So the township inspector will be here shortly and that will be the second part of this video so hopefully you can bear with me with the length of the video because i believe that this is an important thing for me to fight for for me to fight for my family's ability to live and and for us to fight for our private property and our ability to live the way we choose to live based off what god has provided us thanks for paying attention all right so the zoning guy just showed up i will be informing him that i will be videotaping I just want to let you know I will be videotaping this. Understandable. It's understandable. Because I want to fight for my right and to prove my innocence of the guilt that you guys, you know. And I told you right from the get-go. I don't have a different definition than a, from a storage shed to a manufactured home. A manufactured home by UCC regulation has installation requirements that do not need to be met in a storage shed. Okay? I've never issued so a you, permit. So you, so I guess this is my, my other issue is that we were issued the permit. I have it here. You have, okay, so you have. I have it here. You have the permit as issued. As far as the layout goes too, Dane, I'm gonna tell you, this is the, the but, way that it's positioned in your plot plan. Well, it's positioned this way. Like this, right. is, it's it's off, you know. I understand. But, but here's my issue is that Mike came out, he came out for the first inspection, which he never took note of, which apparently is my fault that he came out and didn't take note of. It's not your fault, dude. This, the second thing he did was they complained about the PVC pipe in the front. On, when they came out for that, he asked me, he came out, this is the second time, and this is noted, he had to say something to the township because that guy complained about it. So he comes out, can I inspect the building again? That's the second time. He inspects it, all clear. Third time, sewer, the sewer comes out. Or there's some deal because they, they didn't plan appropriately for the sewer. He comes out, he checks the basement, how is there, how's the runoff and all this bullshit. Can I check the, can I check the, the barn again? For sure, no problem. We have the chicken house back here that's not mouse proof. This is mouse proof. We have an 880 square foot building that we live in, our primary building. You're call they're calling this a primary structure, which is absurd that that is also a primary structure with that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, that's in the definition of the building. And that's okay. what I'm trying to get across with you, the but difference between a manufactured home and a storage. Let me, let me continue with this. He comes out the third time and he says, look, they're complaining because they see lights on in there, okay? He actually said it might be a good idea for us to block the windows for the lights, which was, we ended up doing. This is like two and a half years ago. So we can't, and nobody, none of my direct neighbors have complained. No one's complained. And then, so all, he came out three times. This is the fourth time now. And now we're, based off what you're telling me, we're gonna have to get this removed or whatever. Listen, you know what I'm saying? But you know, outside of that. I mean, maybe it'd be good for, Dickhead over there. As far as an accessory structure goes, the fact that there's no footers or whatnot, it would be better if you had it as a, you know, as an ag, as an ag structure. Because if it was a manufactured home, it wasn't installed properly. That would be another issue. That's what. That's. I mean, that would be my whole argument. Is like it was installed as an ag structure. Mm -hmm. Contrary to what anybody else wants to say, people can drive by and people can watch inside and look from the road. And they can and they can peek in on my property and they can tell people that they see somebody living inside this building but they're never inside the building and why are they trying to infringe on my rights as an american citizen to farm this property 
why do people believe that it's okay to drive past this property and infringe upon my rights as an American to farm? Would you like to see the farm structure? Oh, I don't care, yeah. Okay. So we do a walkthrough? Okay, this is basically where we agree. This is the, and this is the fourth in. time that this has been inspected. Okay, I don't... All right, so we're gonna go in, we're gonna ID the building for what the building is. Okay. We're gonna attempt to reference it more so as a ag type structure, as something other than a storage shed, which obviously it isn't. And then uh, Dane, you know, is going to attempt to prove both through, you know, uh, challenging of my notice of violation and presentation to the, to the supervisors that this is an ag structure and as such is, uh, is outside of the requirements of the UCC. Okay. okay. But basically what he wants to prove is the fact that this was referenced as the wrong kind of structure by uh, Mike Schwank, that it isn't an actually a shed. It's not ex actually being used as a manufactured home, but it's being used as an ag structure for a working... And there's working no home, home dwelling. So that's, there's no that's home occupation. As of right now. And it's not a primary, a primary structure. It's a secondary structure and there's no dwelling inside. Contrary to people who drive by slowly and see and peek in and try and report to the township, no one's living in there. Right, so we'll walk we, through, we'll and, walk and, through, and we'll and ID I'm, the building, and then like I said, like we talked about before Kenny got here, at that point it'll be, you know, it'll be on you to prove without a shadow of a doubt to the township that it actually is an ag structure, it's not a shed, it's uh, not a, a, a secondary use as far as a business or as far as a, a dwelling, anything along those lines, it'll be up to you to prove. Well, wouldn't it be a secondary use for, I mean, my farm is a business. Uh, secondary use, not se secondary use in that it's not another dwelling. It can be a secondary use in a, as an accessory structure, but if, if the general ag would be secondary to the primary dwelling. Correct. You're gonna basically, it'll be in, you know, it'll be your responsibility to prove that it, it's that. It's a general ag structure and not, okay. a, and not a, a dwelling. All right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And this front area is when in the winter time when we move our chickens in we put a whole bunch of hay bales in that front area I mean, if you guys have questions about anything i'll answer it Is there a there's a light right here did you buy this new when you did get it Dave? no i've got it on craigslist and the range and everything this is all operational the range, yes, the range came with the, the building. The plumbing is operational. Yep. Cold water. Is this, this is operational in here as well? I don't know if that still is. We used that twice for cooling processed beans and leaves, <laughs> like green leaves, <laughs> kale, Swiss chard. Um, but okay. we haven't used that. The, that for cooling in quite a while. We use the range for hot water if we want to process like tomatoes. Okay, and this is it. This is the back of the unit. It yeah. Doesn't go any further. No. So there's definitely no sleeping quarters. Is that just? That was the bathroom. And feel free to look inside. It was. It's not anymore. Nope. And this is what I was telling you about before, Jason. Is the uh, the windows? We were informed to do that because. People insisted on driving past and saying that they saw somebody, the lights were on, we had electric in here, which I never was informed that you couldn't have electric inside an ag-based building. Uh, and, and who was it that told you that? The BCO, pre, the prior BCO, said that would be a good idea to keep people, the peeping toms, out from your building. Because that's what they are, they're peeping toms. People who drive past here and they want to infringe upon my right as an American to farm, they're peeping toms, and we had to do this to protect ourselves and to protect our civil liberties. All right, so in its layout, and I hope structurally, you know, as, as much as we're listening to each other, in its layout, it's obviously a manufactured home. It's not a storage shed. This is a trailer. This is in, by no means, this has all the characteristics of something that if, if one were to want to, could put sleeping quarters in and use as a manufactured home. I'm not saying it's being used like that. I'm not saying the intent was ever to be that, but this is in fact a manufactured home. This is a so trailer. so the the shed that By I have over here, I, the shed I have over here could be a manufactured home as well. Then so we should be. No, well, no. Why not? I could put this a, would have a plate on it. But this I could, would have an ID plate from the manufacturer on it at some point. But there was no there was no manufacturer. This was built by a guy like just some random dude who built T111 sheds. This was brought in like this is what I is basically. This was what brought in as two sheds, two separate sheds, and it was united. 
I mean, you have, there's ceiling fans in that thing. I mean, there's, there's nothing, electric. There's nothing in, about this about this thing. That but it was brought. You were saying it was it's a trailer. It was brought in as two T111 sheds. When we called Kuzans to get it moved, that's how we had to describe it. The electric was already in place. I mean, the, the ceiling fan doesn't even have a, a, a fourth prong. Like, we don't even use it. Like, that, that it means... Tied? This was two... Where was it tied? Right here? Yeah, right there. So this is... This, is this, the animal, right? this was the first thing that we put in. And then a week later, they had to bring in the second one. So what's the difference between two sheds being united and that T111 shed I have right outside there that I could easily put in, I could, and, and the chicken house has electric, I could easily put a bed over in that one and sleep in there, and, and now I have sleeping quarters this with a roof. It doesn't have the characteristics of a normal, uh, of, a, of a storage shed. It has the characteristics yeah. of a unit that was made for someone to live in. That's what it has well, and, and, I'll, and I'll admit that, we, we, bought it, we bought it from a guy that was using it as a cabin. And we bought it because it was $4,000 for this. To buy a brand new shed of, of just from here back would have been over 4,000 bucks. So at the end and of the day- saying shed, it, understand that a storage shed under the UCC, it doesn't have requirements for like insulation. All right, there's no habitable space associated with a storage shed. Right. Okay. This is insulated. This is habitable space. So regardless yeah, of whether for he sure. was using Absolutely. it, you know, what I mean? whether he was using it for a storage shed before, whether he was using it for a recreational cabin before, a storage shed doesn't have requirements under the UCC to be protected. It doesn't have electrical requirements. Anything that's used as habitable space does. It has different requirements for sanitary, for for potable water, for electric for height of switches and walls, for wall right, yeah, absolutely. Covers, for insulation, okay? Right. So I, to I a degree, that. I understand your point in, like we mentioned before, as far as the use goes, but in the actual integrity of the structure, this is not a storage shed, this is habitable space, okay? So, outside of I, that. I, but my point is, is that what differentiates a T111 built building, mm -hmm. such as this, and the T111 built shed that I have outside sitting right there that we use as a brooder house that has electric in it that we could easily put insulation in and we could easily stud out and live in it like what's what why there are requirements space wise there are requirements uh utility wise okay there are requirements ingress egress wise right you know these things and i can print all those different requirements from well, the I, I mean, out for you at the end of the there day are, it's it's an agricultural building and, box, I'm, and and i i understand your angle there you can take any box with four walls and a roof and put a bed in it and claim that it's livable right. space. You can. When you have an actual unit like this, like, you know, and I'm not I'm not looking, but you know, a lot of different uh, manufactured homes or units to this degree will have identification on them. Either on the outside, there'll be a placard, sometimes under there, sometimes in the mechanical room, you know. I know, but this was privately room. built by the dude that we bought it from. So I know that that, that, that there is no identification plate. I know okay. there's no identification plate. All right. Well, even outside of the the uh, identification plate, the fact that it has a breaker panel, the fact that I mean, all these things come into play for it to be not looked at as just simply a storage shed. For it to be looked at as right. something that could be, and I'm going to use the P word, a principal dwelling. This so, would have the ability to be a. So principal based dwelling. off the notice of violation, where you guys say that someone's living in here, and it is a principal structure. So you're saying, even though I'm using it for agriculture, even though it's strictly farm-based usage as evidenced by this place right now there's no one living in here so the dwelling part where where people are saying that someone's living in here is clearly not the case that would be the violation all right and you, i know you keep coming back to the general ag side of it but until we have right, documentation but, and until but based off showed of, that it's a general that it's an, a directly an agricultural structure it's looked at as for what it is. And it's that's, not a storage shed. I, I, I agree with that, home. but based off of this violation, which I'm going to bring up right here, home occupation shall be conducted within a single family. So, so you, like, it's the erection of more than one principal structure. So based off of your, the UCC, it's, it's more than one principal structure if it's not a, an agriculture-based building. Correct. Agreed. Correct. It's an agriculture-based building, but that's up to me now to prove because it's, you know, guilty until proven innocent. Um, home occupation regulation. So I, I, this is the part I don't get. The home occupation regulation is that home occupation shall be conducted within a single family detached dwelling with direct access to ground level. Why is this part of the home occupation regulations when no one's occupying it? 
Because like we said when I was talking to you outside, when I first came out, when we first talked about it, you said we were using this as office space for garage strength. So when I first updated the report that the right. supervisors go over, that's how it was noted. It was so, noted as office space. Why would, so I, why would I need way, an office space when I have a building with five offices? No idea. But when I came, first came out, that's, Can you how answer that? was, that's how it was. I, have, I own a building that has five offices. Why would I use this as an office space? We were told this was office space. Well, it's not office space, and that's very. That's where it came into us. Well, it's yeah, very clear that it's it not was, office it space. Came into us. I, it's probably in writing you, somewhere that it was be used as office space. Okay, but space. it's but it's not office space. So now I have to go back and prove that it's not office space. If it's ag related, you, it's it falls in under the ag use. So if you were using it as office space for the ag use, that's I mean that would be an understandable part of the ag the ag structure. It would. Like going back to it, this doesn't say ag structure, this says shed. This is not a shed, this is livable space, it's mm -hmm. a manufactured home, okay? If you guys, if your lawyer can contest my notice of violation and show and prove, when I'm visually, I, I'm not far off, it is being used for agricultural related, you know, uh, reasons right now. If you can prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, to the supervisors that this isn't a shed, it was an issue with the permitting process, it's an ag structure, this is a working farm, like I told you outside, you know, you'll basically have to show through numbers and through mm -hmm. whatever you guys are, whatever else you guys are growing or what have you, that this isn't an, an operation farm I think that you could probably prove that this was an ag structure but having said that Correct. like I said to you outside as far as this goes as far I, as what's think... known on the books at the township it's in violation of zoning I think one thing one problem I'm gonna have is just like what what why is it like with the township supervisors and and I've been informed that the township supervisors there's really only one that has a problem with this building why is it like like how can I prove to them that this is a farm like that this is used for farm like they they insist that someone lives in here and they've never been in here so they're going to sit there and say oh well I think based off of what I see from the road well, I think I this think site inspection is a, is a good first step Okay, I think that nobody obviously comes onto your property without your permission. All right, so there were there was a lot of question marks up in the air. All right, I'm not placing blame. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm saying that from what it was observed at the street level, people didn't know what was going on, and that's where the question mark comes up. Which why do people care? Why why do people care? Well, May, Mr. Zoning, Stout, maybe right? you can answer. Why do you, why do people care? We got to take whatever people complain about. Who who was complaining? I can't tell. You. I, I think I know. Complaining. I think I know who it was. We've had numerous complaints. No, you haven't. About, yes, we have. No. Yes, we did. All right. Okay. You know, I'm going to so stand here and argue with you, Dan, because we did. Several people asked us what was going on. Mm -hmm. They seen a manufacturer. Looking at it, it's a manufactured home from the outside. Okay. You know, let me just say this. If, and if, a lot of the other municipalities that I that I operate and that I control, a structure like this, outside of whatever issues people may or may not have against the property, if a, a, a structure like this was placed under a storage shed permit, it would throw up question marks, regardless of what okay. municipality we're talking about. I guess From here, I, I'm, missing I'm to, frustrated to because I did everything I was supposed to do from day one. Well, I filed maybe. everything appropriately. I let him inspect this three times. Now this is the fourth. I did right. everything well, I was I'm supposed to do. What I'm going to say here is... Maybe if he would have came to the supervisors the first time a question mark was asked about the property and he explained He did. It. He I, did. After somebody complained about the PVC pipe in the front, he came in and he inspected this a second time. And he told them on the second time, and that's on record. That is on record. Someone complained about the drainage PVC pipe that I had no idea about and I had to go to the... That isn't yours. That next door. Correct. But somebody complained I about it. I mow it. I, someone complained about it. And Mike had to come in here, and he, when he went to look at it, that's the second time he inspected it. Is he said, "All right, well, can I come look at the storage shed?" Right. But, but then the third time was with was with the sewer. But what he's I'm been in here three times. He never came back to the supervisors and explained the thing to the supervisor. But correct. But how is explained the structure? To what the was supervisor. going on? But how is that my fault? I I did Nobody everything. Nobody said it was your fault. But I did everything I was supposed to do as a citizen of Onalani Township. Correct. I did everything I was supposed to do. I, I don't, to I, my, the best of my I'm knowledge. Is, is, I, I, I would say you probably did, but he never came back to the supervisor. I, and I understand and told that. Us exactly what I understand that. Those and I'm going to look at it this way. That's why he's no longer the man. On and the that, board. that, and I, and that's great. That's fine. But now yeah. I'm the one who's got to deal with it. And I'm sitting and here. I'm going to tell you this right now. Maybe I shouldn't say. It. 
but you're not the only one in the township that's dealing with this problems. We've got a lot of them. I mean, More than this is going to add up on these two hands. I know, but the, the sad part is, is that I'm sitting here and, and based off of a, te the, a, a member of this township since I was four years old, I did everything I knew I was supposed to do. And I'm sitting here still for the fourth inspection, have to sit here and prove that it's an agriculture-based shed because a worker that you guys paid didn't do his job appropriately. And now I'm the one who isn't at work, who isn't making money, so I can pay my taxes and pay my bills as an American citizen. Well, I, I, I the way that it saying. was done before, there was no path into... I know, but that's not my problem. That's not my fault. That's the thing. I did everything I was supposed to. I paid for the permits. I paid for all that. You guys issued me the permit. That's no, like he issued the permit. But the fact, and he's but only, he represented the township. He so it was, the township, and he wasn't representing the township. But he still was paid by the township, and I did everything I knew I was supposed to do. Had someone said to me in 2014, you need to make this an agricultural building because that's what you're going to use it for, I would have done it. And we wouldn't be standing here today. And I probably wouldn't have those windows covered because people keep driving by and want to peek in and I don't know what they think is going on. I don't know where he thinks that, you know, that's going to help anything because... Because maybe people will stop looking, looking from the road when, and whatever. see lights on. Regardless at this point, regardless at this point, and I think and, that in, and the end, in, in the end game, if if you were to follow up against Schwenk's services as far as whatever issues, you know, whatever I'm not going to do so, that. I don't. I well, don't. listen, this is this is basically, I think, and I, I think that the township would probably uh, uh, agree that the, the 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 mistakes were made. Okay, that doesn't cur that doesn't erase the fact that the mistake is still in play, and that's the attitude of the township. Once we've, we've set a path here, all right, this is what we didn't have before. We had a lot of question marks. We had a lot of gray matter. We have a path now, so we can keep going, rolling back right, on yeah, whatever okay. mistakes sure. were made. I agree. We, okay? Yeah, yeah. Were we on the same page? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with you in that, and, and I don't think I'm going out on a limb here either, St. Ken. You guys did do everything that you thought that you were done. You asked, you got permission, and you went forward on And we allowed four inspections. Okay, and you allowed four inspections. Supervisors were not made aware of any of those prior inspections. Okay. No, they so were. The they were made of, aware of two inspections. Inspections with not having to do with this. Structure. But I would assume he had to have told them after he did the PVC no, pipe. I can't work on assumption, and I and I don't know this guy. Most of the time that we get out of him was on his written reports, and I could probably show you copies of what he had on his written reports, and nothing was ever said exactly what questions were asked and were never answered with him. I, I would like to see him because I. What if on one of those written reports it's a storage unit or it, it's it's a farm base? It's a right right to know request. Yeah, I I want to. I want to pay for work for the right to know request. I mean that's. A, yeah. Right. You could, you could fill out a right. To so know. my question right is. Right to know request. You can get you can get the whatever paperwork is there and uh, and as, does he have to write to re no request for uh, past meeting minutes as well? Probably. I think so. I think you have to. That's going to be your rule. Well, maybe not Listen. the minutes. Maybe you could just request the minutes. You, you, you can get you actually can request get the, minutes. You can get the minutes offline, online. But I don't know what meetings he was addressing this. Well, you know, the, you, dates, what would you know, the dates associated with the inspections, I'm sure you know, roundabout, you know, when this was right. issued. Yeah. Yeah. It's more work. It is, but it's a path. And it's a path to where we, we, we can close this out and be and be done with it. So I need to file... A rebuttal to the notice of violation that this is strictly a farm agricultural base building. I, that in my opinion, but I'm not a lawyer. I, if you have contacted your lawyer and you've talked to him about where we're at here, I would t inform your lawyer on how this meeting went. Explain to your lawyer what all the different points that we've talked about. Explain to him that we were in and that we saw and that we, you know, we commented on on the structure. Let him know what we felt the best path, you know, for you to prove. What you know, what you're saying is is the truth, mm -hmm. and uh, and then see what see what he says. I mean, I would expect, and like I said, I'm not by no means a lawyer. I would expect that he would want to rebuttal the notice of violation, and with that rebuttal to the notice of violation, I would expect that you know. Does you, a lawyer have to write that? I, I would talk to your if you have one. I, I, yeah, I, know, I, I just I don't think that he probably has to, but I'm just I saying, mean, like from my perspective, I just spent a whole lot of money on another place, and we're trying to make ends meet right now and that's the other problem here is that we invested in my business 
And financially, we're not, that's, that's the other part that drives me nuts is that financially, we're not at a point yet to be back to the point where I can spend $2,000 on a lawyer. That's the other part. If this was two years ago before I bought the building, I'd be fighting you guys tooth and nail. But I sit here now and I go, you know, I don't have the money. And that's the sad part is that if I don't have the money to pay for a lawyer to write that rebuttal, then I lose all my, all my freedom to actually do what I want to do here. But as far is as money and as far as the letter and what have you, I think, and this isn't just me saying that I think, and Ken, I think, if, if he's able to prove that it's a working farm and that this is an ag structure supporting the working farm, I mean, it's outside of my rules and regs through the UCC, and it's protected in zoning. So, I mean, it, okay. that, that, it is what it is there. If, you know, it, but... If you don't do that, if you don't stay in contact with me, if you don't correct, stay in yeah, contact yeah, and now, with now it's on me that I need to do don't my shit. Start providing us with this documentation, proving to us that it is a working farm and this is an ag structure supporting the working farm. You're still in violation of the zone, right? All right. So yes. I'm looking at my NOV pretty much with your graces now as a, a slight extension on my notice of violation to yeah. give Dane at least a, an attempt to prove what right. I, we got, I, I, his I got no problem with that. Okay. That's, you know. All right. We can work with you. You know, that's no problem. Okay. You know, just as long as we know what we were, we weren't in the loop before to find out exactly what was going on. And I think that's always, like I said to you, Dan, that's always what it comes back to is that line of communication. Yeah. When we don't hear from people, and that's not just you, and I'm not pointing no, at yeah, you, because yeah. like Ken said, we have it on a lot of different... But Ken, I, I want you to know, I didn't respond because I was representing the United States, and I was in Tokyo for three weeks. So you guys issue this, and I'm and in another country representing our country... And then I come back and I'm sitting here, you know, all patriotic oh, okay. and I'm going, I, I was out of the country for three weeks in Asia. And then I come back and I, and, and I'm, that would have been taken into consideration regardless, right. even if you were still in direct violation, if you weren't here to get the letter, I mean, we're not ball breakers to that degree. I'm not, we gonna, don't, you know, we I'm don't hold gonna, everything right. No, no, there's, uh, there's, no. that's your gray matter that you were talking yeah. about. That's gray matter. Okay. So I understand your point and I understand what you were doing over there and I think it's fantastic, but we, I mean, th there would have obviously been an extension, you know, on that. Even if you weren't, even if you didn't have as good a reason for this being here as, as I, you know, I, I kind of think that you do. Okay. Ball's in your court. The path is there. We don't, we don't hold anything right to the just because it says 15 days. We're not going to the district justice in 15 days. I mean, no. that's no. we've never done it to anybody else, and we would have done it, wouldn't have done it to you either. That's okay. We'll try to play ball with whoever we can. All right. Okay. We have an understanding then. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, because yeah. I understand where you're coming from, what you got to pay, you know, for a lawyer now or whatever, whatever you got to do. But like I said before, we got some people that are paying a lot more than you will. Mm. Yeah, and that's it, fine. It's a shame, and there's not much we can do about it. No, there's not. No, there's not. Just trying to fix one project at a time. All right. All right. <laughs> yep. All right, well, I feel like this was, this was productive. Let me turn those lights off. Yeah. All right, so the meeting went fairly well. It was fairly productive. We discussed everything with the building uh, based off of codes. They told me what I need to do to provide them with documentation that we are a functioning farm and then it is indeed used as a farm for farm-related purposes. So I feel like we are heading in the right direction. It's just going to take like another day or two for me to put together my argument and rebuttal back to their notice of violation then hopefully we should be on the right path to protect our right to farm at hickory hill peace